Hello and welcome to Freedom Revamped. It is, it is your very first time here. My name is Courtney, the founder of Freedom Revamped. We are a platform dedicated to helping others discover and find their sense of internal freedom. And today we have a very special guest with us. Kyla Bell is a 15 year old small business owner. She loves family, God, everything about the arts and baking. She's a sophomore at Newman Smith High School and is a part of the Gallery in Motion Dance Company team and she's a member of the Trojan Band in the Drumline. She attends Preston Trail Community Church and serves with the middle school students as a breakout discussion leader. Without further ado, I will bring Miss Kyla onto the screen. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Guys, Hello. so the um, topic of today is going to be Young and Black in 2020. Um, I actually got a chance to listen to one of your other podcast that you were featured on and the questions you were answering just stuck out to me so well. So that's sort of why I chose this topic. <laughs> so um, at Freedom Revamp, we always give our guests an opportunity to define freedom for themselves because that is one of our main goals. So the first question I have for you is how do you define freedom? Um, well, at least for me, I feel most free when I'm able to, you know, whether I'm dancing or playing an instrument or creating whenever I'm able to be creative and do the things I love to do, that's when I feel most free. So that's like my definition just personally. Awesome. I feel like for me, um, freedom definitely means being myself 100% of the time and allowing other people to also be who they were created to be. Um, but with that in mind, I sometimes have to practice freedom differently. Like right now I'm working on being more um, outspoken, whereas in the past I was more working on um, learning who I was. So in this mm -hmm. season of life, how are you practicing freedom? Um, I'm practicing freedom like I'm just every chance I get. So I uh, teach dance. So um, I am like choreographing a little Christmas show. So. I'm able to like, exercise my dancing and my choreography skills and grow those. And I'm constantly trying to teach myself how to play new songs on the piano. And I'm trying to like get better at singing a little bit. So I'm working on that. So I'm just constantly trying to find things. Awesome. Yeah, I love singing. Um, I also write music, so oh, that's, that's awesome. something. Yes. <laughs> um, now, 2020 has been rough. We have Corona, we have um, police brutality, quarantine, all of that. So how have you been coping um, during 2020 and in quarantine overall? Um, I would say, like, most importantly, I've been trying to take the time to, um, like, grow my faith and just try to be grounded in my faith, really. Um, I think that's really important. Um, just trying to kind of get an idea of what I want to do after high school. I'm only a sophomore, but I know I still need to be thinking about what I want to do and what schools I want to attend. Um, I've binge watched a lot of Netflix and Disney Plus. I just finished watching Moesha, actually, and um, I love that show. I love that show so much. And um, Disney Plus, I watched Hamilton a lot this summer. Uh, it's an awesome musical. And then I got to paint a lot. Um, I have like a ton of canvases that I painted over quarantine that are just hanging up in my room. So that's what I've been doing. I love Hamilton. I can literally like watch it three times in a day if I have the time <laughs> to. So it's when so you mentioned good. that, I was like, yes, it really is. <laughs> um, but you mentioned this wasn't one of the questions I sent pre, but you mentioned your faith. So what are ways that you have been growing your faith in this time? Well, um, I'm in a small group at my church. So that helps because I have people to, to talk to about it and process it with. And I have also small group leaders who are constantly checking up on me and making sure like I understand stuff and they're there for questions if I have them. And um, I've been trying to, like before I uh, get on my phone in the mornings, I try to read a little devotional or like a chapter of my Bible just to get my Jesus time in before the hustle and bustle of school starts. And I have awesome uh, parents who are very grounded in faith too. So they're constantly pouring in uh, to me any chance. They so that helps a lot. 
And I feel like that's so important because my um, mom is definitely rooted in her faith and so is my grandmother. So it's um, it's definitely helped me on my journey as well. So I love that you mentioned that because having our parents or even just church leaders who can help us through our faith journey is so important. And it's also important that we confide in them because they'll always be there, but it's ultimately up to us to like step up and say, hey, I have a question about this or I was reading yeah. this in the Bible. Can you expound on that? So the fact that you're doing that at su such a young age is so admirable because I'm 19 and I'll honestly say that I haven't been super rooted in my faith. It started like two years ago, but I grew up in church, same as a lot late. of people. <laughs> yeah, right. It's never too late. But um, the fact that you're doing that already is so admirable. So like we already said, um, 2020 has been rough, but I feel like I've learned a lot in this year. So what is the biggest lesson that you have learned this year? Um, for me, it's just that like God will never change. He's always the same. He's constant despite any changes or challenges that are happening in our world right now with all of the hate and COVID mess. Um, he's always the same. He's always constant. And um, he'll always be there no matter what. I agree. I feel like that's something I've definitely learned, too, because I've heard of so many people getting COVID. I personally know people who have yeah. had it. And um, just to know that a lot of those like we've had a lot of deaths happen this year. But to know that people who are close to me are still alive is such a yeah. huge part in knowing that he's the same all the time. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So what has been the hardest thing this year um, that has happened to you? Um, I would say the hardest thing is dealing with um, fear with everything going on, you know, um, at the beginning of quarantine, of course, we had COVID going on, but also the George Floyd uh, situation that happened and that really rocked my world. And um, I guess I kind of knew about the stuff that was happening, but it really, really opened my eyes to the, the injustices that are still happening around us every day. And it obviously, it made me a lot more scared and like more hesitant, like, when I see like a police car on the side and we'd be driving, I would tense up and that never really happened before. But because of all the stuff that was going on and being broadcasted, you know, that like started to happen and stuff. And then just me like being scared for the future, you know, obviously wanting to be successful in what I do and be able to love what I do in the future. So I'm a worry word. So <laughs> that's obviously that's something I've been struggling with this year for sure. I agree. It's been fear, it's been fear for me and also um, learning the areas that I've needed to grow. I think that's something that I've kind of been struggling with this year because sometimes we don't want to admit that there are places that we can grow in. But for sure. learning that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, for me, with the fear aspect of it, I've personally just been turning to God and journaling and talking to my grandma, my mom. So um and writing music about it. So outside of your faith, which I know is like a huge part of our lives, but um, what are other ways you have been coping with the fear that you have had? Like, have you been talking to your parents, our church leaders? What are other ways that you've dealt with your fear, fear this year? Um, yeah, so I definitely had conversations with my parents. Um, actually, over the summer, they had us do, in the midst of everything going on, um, they had us do different presentations on things. So like, me and my brother, we had to put together a presentation on like Juneteenth and uh, like, you know, understand the origin of that and having conversations with them about what's going on. And uh, uh, we had talked my church. I mean, it's I go to a predominantly white church, so like I guess it's not I guess it could be kind of uncomfortable, but um, they really wanted to, you know, learn and listen and understand. And I think that made it easier to process because they were listening and they were sympathizing. Um, I wanted to know like what they could do to help and uh yeah I journaled I think I already said that I journaled and honestly I would just go and like play on my guitar play on the piano because uh playing music is just like an outlet for me it's, like I can just let it all out I can find the song and just let it all out and uh, that helped a lot as well. Yes, journaling and talking to people and also round of applause to your parents for having you guys actually study Juneteenth because it the school I went to, they didn't teach us anything about it. So I didn't I, learn about Juneteenth. Yeah, I knew nothing about that. <laughs> I was like, right. 
I was like, what is this? But <laughs> shout out to your parents. <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, and shout out to you for knowing how to play the guitar. I have one and it's collecting dust. <laughs> Haven't picked it up since I got it. So I might have to learn one day. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> yes. So um, I also discovered that you make stickers. Yes. So what got you into making those and how can people, you know, order them, buy them, support your business? Okay, so I think it was about a year ago. And uh, I was just bored because I get really bored easily. And so I just uh, went on YouTube and I saw this video for stickers made with packaging tape and uh, paper, like printer paper. And you just like drew your design and you stuck it between parchment paper and the tape and you cut it out and you make your sticker. Um, and so I was like, oh, that's cool. So I had made a few and then I kept them and stored them. And then we moved from Missouri to Texas and quarantine hit. And I was like, of course, I'm 15, so like I'm old enough to get a job. So I wanted to start making my own money, but with COVID, that proved to be like that wasn't gonna happen anytime soon. So like, okay, I know how to make these stickers, and I have been looking at sticker paper. So I had my dad order me uh, some paper, and then I just started drawing and making designs. And it'll be like either me hand drawing them or I draw them on his iPad. And um, yeah, I just started designing stuff and trying to be as creative as I could with the things around me for design. So, yeah. Awesome. I love that. And I saw that. Um, can you tell me the name of your sticker company again? Oh, yeah. It's called K's Creations. Yes, and you spelled creations with a K, and I love when people <laughs> start doing their names differently because people misspell my name wrong all the time because it's Courtney with a K instead yeah. of a C. So the fact that you added that little K in there was so cute. <laughs> so that's why I worded this question the way I did. And do you think you will find yourself expanding into creating <laughs> other things? I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I really want to. Um... I know I said I also painted, so I've actually been able to sell a couple paintings, which has been really cool. But um, I really want to make like crew necks and like little long sleeve shirt. I want to make clothing. Um, and I saw embroidering over quarantine, and it looks really cool. I know it'll be time consuming, but it's something I would like to discover and kind of kind of play around with my designs. And then I want to um, make like little like notebook like notepads. Um, I follow someone, her name is like All Things Leanne, I think is her Instagram handle. And she makes like the cutest like stickers and like shirts and coats and stuff. And so like she's also like a big like inspiration for me as far as my business goes. Um, yeah, she always has me inspired. So those are some of the things I want to eventually get to. Awesome. Well, shout out to you for getting started so young. I feel like when I was 15, I didn't know what I wanted to do. <laughs> So the fact that you know what you want to do and actually have the courage to step up and do it is very commendable. Um, and I feel like you're going to inspire a lot of people. Um, Freedom Revamp, we're still growing, but we do have people who will support us. Like every time we release something, they support us. So can okay. you tell our followers how they can keep up with you and how they can support your business? Um, yeah, so uh, my Instagram handle is a lowercase. K's creation, so it's just a KS, no apostrophe or anything, and all together, K's creations with a K. Uh, dot 2020 on Instagram, um, where I'll post anything about sales or new designs that I have out. Um, right now, I'm working on getting the website developed, so orders are by the end right now, but um, I'm hoping that I can get my website up and running soon. So that's how you can stay up to date with all my. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for um, joining us today. I really thank enjoyed the conversation. Me. Yes, what you're doing is so amazing. So keep it up. I'm definitely going to um, be supporting you in everything that you're doing. So that means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> you're so welcome. And thank you, um, everyone, for tuning in. That's all for today's interview. So until next time, continue to practice freedom.